Did it seem quiet before the former president posted on Truth Social that he had, in fact, been told that he's been indicted here? Yeah, Kayla, I mean, it is very quiet here. There's just um, only really a, a handful of media that were still in place when Trump made that posting. I mean, all day it was pretty quiet. We did see some of the key prosecutors who were on the special counsel's team working on the documents case, and we saw them, one of them going out to get lunch. We saw them going back into the cafeteria to get some snacks, some chips and cookies. And then we also had heard at the end of the day, after everyone had gone, that there were a bunch of pizza boxes back in the grand jury room. But we we weren't sure if the grand jury had met or even that they had voted, uh, but it has been a relatively tranquil scene here today. Uh, you know, of course, if you remember back in New York after Trump was indicted on the state charges by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, it was a similar thing. The indictment came down on a Thursday. He was arraigned the following Tuesday. That gave everyone time to get into place. So you can imagine the scene here will become quite busy, um, not only the media descending, but also potentially some Trump supporters, some members of the public, uh, you know, as Evan was just explaining. They will have to get a security perimeter in place here. And, you know, Trump being at Mar-a-Lago, as you well know, I mean, they are used to having him transporting him around. But this is certainly of a different magnitude and dimension. The first time a former president facing federal charges. Uh, you know, we, there was this run through in New York. We saw how that worked. What's unclear here is how they will handle it internally. Will they shut down the courthouse like they essentially did in New York, freezing the building, freezing the floors that the former president was going to be on? and then creating you know, a pretty a rigorous system of who would be able to get into the courtroom to witness this, you know, because there are no cameras in, in court and there are no cameras in federal court. So the public won't get a glimpse of this, and it remains to be seen how they're going to figure out the logistics of having this arraignment take place here on Tuesday. Caitlin? Yeah, remarkable to see a second indictment in just such a short period of time. Thank you, Kara. More perspective now. Joining me is our senior political correspondent, Abby Phillip, our CNN senior legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed, chief national correspondent, John King, and also conservative lawyer and Washington Post contributing columnist, George Conway, who has long predicted that this moment would come to pass. But it, it's historic. I mean, we've it, never it seen absolutely. a former president face federal charges yeah, it, before. It's absolutely historic. I mean, this is probably the most significant politically uh, most significant historically, uh, most historically important criminal case since the Aaron Burr case in, at the beginning of the 19th century when he was tried for treason. Uh, this is, you know, it is stunning to see, it is breathtaking to see, but it's not surprising at all. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and, and Donald Trump is going to argue that he was mistreated and he is being singled out and he's being abused. But Which the fact of the matter is, is he's, he's gotten the benefit of the doubt. This, if you or any of us at this table had been a government official in the White House during the Trump administration and we took this volume of documents home and we jerked around the National Archives and Records Administration for a year and a half plus and then forced the government to get to a search warrant, it wouldn't have taken a year and a half for them to get that search warrant. They would have been knocking, to, the FBI would have been at our doors any like within months and the fact of the matter is if it, it when when this search warrant came out we saw the affidavit we saw a redacted affidavit that the FBI used to get the search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago and the amount of information in there was absolutely stunning at the time I mean it was shocking at the time that, the, that they, they had such a powerful case already and simply by virtue of the fact is they found the stolen property in his office and at his home. So the fact of the matter is, he could have been indicted months ago. And again, if it was one of us, he would have been indicted months ago. He, is, he has gotten special treatment in his favor, and this is not a criticism of the Justice Department. It's a, it's a statement of fact that the Justice Department has to be extra careful and extra uh, cautious and make sure that it has ev all its ducks in a row um, before bringing a charge against the former president and presidential candidate. But this, these, these charges could have been brought long ago. And one other point, on the venue, I, I, there's been these suggestions that, that somehow this was a sudden change in venue. The fact of the matter is, um, we knew back in August that there was going to be a potential venue issue, and people were discussing it. Legal nerds were discussing it, not, um, uh, not, 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 not in the cafes, not in the, not in the, not in the coffee shops of America, but there was a real legal issue because so much of the illegal conduct that was described in the FBI affidavit took place at. Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida. And the Constitution, the Sixth Amendment, provides that a criminal defendant here, Donald Trump, the criminal defendant, um, is entitled to a jury 
in the district and the state in which he committed the crime. You mentioned the Justice Department. We haven't heard anything from them yet, Paula. Do you expect that we will? How does the special counsel's office handle this? Yeah, our reporting right now, Caitlin, is that, that we will not hear anything from special counsel Jack Smith or his office. And that is that is a deliberate choice. They must have known when they offered the courtesy of informing him that he had been indicted, that's standard, that's what you would do with most defendants. You knew that this was very likely to wind up on social media, which is exactly what has happened. But they're not going to offer any statements, any additional details, or unseal the indictment tonight. And, you know, again, that is their choice, but we have to look at how this worked out uh, with past special counsels uh, in terms of letting other people craft the narrative, not just releasing the evidence uh, or the charges. And the Justice Department, the FBI, they have been under siege. Criticism about political bias from both sides of the aisle for the past seven or eight years since the investigation at Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. One of the reasons we have a special counsel is because the attorney general is trying to protect the integrity, right, uh, the public's view of the Justice Department. So tonight, the fact that the special counsel is not going to say anything, that we're getting most of the breaking news uh, from the former president who has just been indicted, that is something that history will ultimately judge. It's unclear, though, if this is the correct decision. Although I, I think we can probably say that regardless of whether they said something or not, the accusations of bias would always be there because this was the plan all along. Uh, you know, Trump and his allies have been trying to sow the seeds of this doubt about whether this case was significant or not. And notably, you know, even the, the people people who are running against him are sort of accepting this narrative that because he is a former president and because he is running for president again, that that uh, ought to subject him to some kind of other standard. Uh, and that is, I think, what will be tested here once we actually know the, the details of it. Uh, the, the significance of the reporting that you and the rest of the team uh, reported about that, that tape uh, in which he's talking about a specific document, we don't know whether that document is involved in this. We don't know whether that was all. But even if it were that alone, I think it really opens the door to a really serious set of issues about national security, about Trump trying to utilize the documents in a way, uh, in any kind of way, frankly, and not just to peruse them, but to use them to prove a point about General Mark Milley. And those are really serious issues and one, uh, ones that cannot really be spun once we know the details. Yes, we, national defense information. We have not heard one word publicly from the special counsel since he took this job. Yeah. which, if you're talking about the gravity of the case, investigating a former president, the gravity of the issues, classified documents, potentially national security secrets, you can understand that. But if you study the lessons of the Mueller report, if you study the lessons of two impeachments, you also understand what Donald Trump is going to do and what he is doing, what he's been doing for weeks and weeks, even before this moment, and he's put, it on, and he's put it on steroids tonight. He is telling his people, don't listen to this man. The FBI is corrupt. The deep state is corrupt. They're after me again. Trying to convince them, don't listen to him. Because Trump's smart. He's smart. He's cynical, but he's smart because when they, if, when they lay it out, if you read the Mueller report, you know, did it prove collusion? No. Did it say a lot of really bad things about Donald Trump? Yes, it did. Uh, but his people don't believe it because he poisoned the well beforehand and said, do not listen to anything these people say. So I'm not a lawyer. Uh, Jack Smith's biggest job is going to be to prove his case in court. We are in Never Never Land. We have never had a former president of the United States who's an active candidate and the faraway frontrunner in the next election indicted on federal charges that are incredibly serious. This is not shoplifting. This is not stealing a car. Uh, this is not running a bad business. This is taking the most secret, top secret documents. You know, when he begrudgingly left the White House, mad that he had to leave after he tried to fight so that he wouldn't have to leave. So the biggest challenge is in court. But the first words Jack Smith and his team do say, first on paper when we see it, and then if they speak to this publicly, are going to be critical to determine whether or not Donald Trump's argument gets outside of his base. If that's the only argument Donald Trump wins with his base, he may win the Republican nomination off it, but he's a former president because the rest of America stopped listening to him. Yeah. We'll with, see what happens. Within an hour, he was already fundraising right. off of this. I want to get back to Maggie Haberman. Maggie, I understand you're learning new details about these charges. We know there's about seven of them, I believe. What are you learning? Kaylin, we've been told through our reporting that there's seven counts, uh, that none of these counts is the same. Uh, that one is a willful retention of the documents, one is a conspiracy to obstruct, which, as Ali noted before, involves more than one person. We don't quite know what that means yet. And then another is false statements, but there are others that, that we're not aware of. Uh, a lot is going to matter when this indictment is unsealed, when we get to look at it, when we get to see the criminal complaint. We will know much more. But, you know, this tracks with everything that you and I both know about this investigation over the last however many months it's been, more than a year.
Yeah, it has been over a year. But when it comes to these counts, even though the former president was bracing for this, he's in New Jersey right now. He's going to have to go to Miami, as he's said himself on Truth Social on Tuesday for this. I mean, what's your reporting on how his mindset is? I know he's been making a lot of phone calls to Republicans, asking them to mm -hmm. attack Jack Smith, to be out there defending him mm -hmm. more vociferously than they are now. But what is your sense of, of how he's viewing this? Defiantly. And I think that's not a surprise. That's what we've seen him do over and over again. He and his team have been preparing for this for a while. He has been telling people for many days that he expected that he was going to get indicted. And frankly, I think he's thought it's happened long before this meeting that his lawyers had with the DOJ on Monday. Um, but, Caitlin, as you and I both know, sometimes he reacts a certain way initially, and then as the event sinks in or the fact set sinks in, his behavior changes. So I'm not quite sure what this is going to look like. We know he has two political events planned for Saturday. Those are going to be pretty significant to watch. And then, obviously, whatever happens in Miami on Tuesday outside of the courtroom will be significant, too. And does he do another press conference as he did at Mar-a-Lago after he was indicted in Manhattan?